Uh, thank you, uh, Lerata, Program Director. Uh, let me uh, greet uh, Commissioner Cecilia Malmstrom. Uh, let me also greet uh, Ambassador Carnaro uh, and uh, the uh, visitors from the EU, both from the delegation and from uh, Brussels, who are here with us. Uh, also, uh, uh, can I greet uh, uh, Mayor Ward, uh, representing uh, my colleague, Minister Vincent Soretzi, who is, of course, the leader of us in the SADAC IPA uh, negotiations. So we were in Kasani when we signed uh, the SADAC uh, uh, IPA uh, last year. Uh, and then also, um, let me just greet on behalf of our host, Gert uh, Kous uh, from the IDC and everybody uh, who's here. So it's a, it's a pleasure to say uh, a few words, although I think from what I'm hearing, my few words are likely to have been overtaken by the discussions that you've already had uh, in this, uh, in this uh, particular engagement. But I just want to say that from South Africa's point of view, uh, the, I think, phrase was already used by uh, Lerato. Uh, what we are seeking is higher levels of more inclusive economic growth. And for that, we've got to bring about some very significant, what we call radical changes uh, in uh, our economy. And they include the structure of the economy. We've got to move away from where we are as producers and exporters, by and large, of primary uh, products, minerals or primary agricultural products. We've got to move up the value chain. And, and be producers and exporters of more sophisticated value-added products. Uh, and that means we need to industrialize. That is the journey that we are trying to be on as a country, but also as a continent. And therefore, when it comes to our trade policy, our priority remains African regional integration, and more particularly, integrating our uh, continent beyond our existing regional communities, prioritizing broadening integration across our existing regional economic communities with the eventual destination of establishing a free trade area on the African continent. And our quest to South Africa is to ensure that we don't just do this in form, but also in substance. And that's why we make sure that we pursue energetically, as we are doing right now with the East African community, the actual tariff schedule negotiations that make a difference and which will allow uh, people uh, from our own countries as well as foreign investors to produce products that will find markets across our borders and that will establish the regional value chains and the economies of scale that will allow us to diversify. <clears throat> now, the European Union is the largest, as a bloc, is the largest trading partner for us in South Africa, but also for most of us uh, in Africa. Uh, and it's also uh, the largest uh, investment partner as a bloc. And as I'm sure you all know and are all very familiar, when uh, South Africa achieved its democracy in 1994, we were trading on what is uh, erroneously called most favored nation terms of the European Union which actually means we were trading on the least favorable terms available to anybody who traded with the European Union. Uh, many other countries, and particularly many other peer countries, enjoyed better than MFN through a variety of arrangements. And so ours was to try to move as far as possible in the direction of our peers, our fellow African countries, who at that stage were part of the Lome and later Cotonou agreements. Uh, we were told we were different to the average one, and therefore we couldn't just uh, have access to the preferences. We would need to negotiate a free trade area agreement, and that uh, agreement was negotiated between 1994 and 1999, and that was the Trade Development and Cooperation Agreement. That was the agreement that's been in place. Uh, and um, although it applied de facto, to Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia, and Swaziland as members of the customs union, at least as far as the imports of products were concerned, it didn't apply de jure because the other countries were not party uh, to that agreement. It was a purely bilateral between uh, South Africa and uh, the European Union. Then uh, what was happening over time was that the European Union gave notice that it was seeking 
free trade agreements with other countries that had previously enjoyed the non-reciprocal preferences. Uh, and we then faced a, a, a number of issues. And I think it uh, does need to be recorded that the EPA took us a full nine years to negotiate. It wasn't short. There were lots of issues. There were disagreements we had, very sharp disagreements at one point or another. But I think that what has happened is that we managed to find each other through long processes of engagement, we found each other. And the agreement that we've got now, the economic partnership agreement which we signed last year, I think uh, we can say has got a number of improvements, significant improvements over uh, the Trade Development Cooperation Agreement. The first one is that it does now apply to all members of the Southern African Customs Union. So we are all par parties and signatories uh, to uh, the commitments which are undertaken. But it also preserves the coherence in that the obligations that we take towards the European Union are the same for all of us, so that the coherence of SACU is not at risk. That is quite an achievement, I must say, because at one stage it looked like that may not be the case, but now uh, it is the case. Secondly, as far as South Africa is concerned, one of our first objectives in participating, because we didn't have to, uh, we could have just stayed with the TDCA, but we went into the negotiations. The first objective was to ensure what I just said. But the second one was to ensure some improvement in the market access that South Africa enjoys in the European market. Uh, and in particular for some of the agricultural products where we did not get what everybody else gets, unfortunately, alas, uh, Commissioner, listen to me, uh, alas, we didn't get duty-free, quota-free. Uh, we had quotas in a number of products, and what we managed to secure was an improvement in a number of those. Uh, and I think you've discussed some of it. Uh, I've been hearing so. But, for example, in fisheries, uh, we were bogged down in the Trade Development Cooperation Agreement on fisheries because uh, we were, that was being linked to the negotiation of a fishing agreement in which we would provide fishing rights. So it never happened. Now we have a market access only agreement in fisheries. So fisheries market, fisheries products are now open. Secondly, we acquired an improvement in a number of quotas. I think probably many of you know them. But under the TDCA uh, for wine, uh, we had a, a quota at zero duty of 50 million liters for bottled wine. Um, that has been increased quite significantly to 110 million litres, uh, and there's flexibility on the size of the container. Uh, on sugar, we never had anything. Now we've got a, a quota with zero duties on 150,000 tonnes of sugar. On ethanol, uh, there's also a quota there of 80,000 uh, tonnes. There's improved market access for some products, some of the meat products, uh, as well as uh, things like uh, canned fruit. Um, we provided some additional market access, but not huge, uh, for some products from the European Union. Um, and then um, I think that, as we all know, that the big payment from our side was on the recognition of geographic indications, but there are also South African geographic indications uh, that are recognized in the EU. That still has to unfold, actually, but uh, they include uh, rooibos, honeybush, karoo lamb, uh, and a number of wine product names. Those have now, will now be recognized as geographic indications. Uh, we managed to uh, secure improved rules of origin, uh, which should uh, allow additional and improved accumulation. Um, there should be, uh, well, we got more flexibility uh, in terms of what had been uh, signed away under the TDCA, uh, our ability to use export taxes on raw materials as tools uh, to support beneficiation, uh, and um, there were improve improvements in provisions uh, on agricultural safeguards. That, in, a sh in, in, in sum, I think is the, are the improvements uh, that uh, uh, are secured uh, over the, the TDCA. Now, I did hear that in your discussions this morning, 
uh, there were a number of instances given uh, where people said that uh, these uh, uh, concessions could not be uh, acted on for one reason or another. Let me just say uh, on that score, when we go out and negotiate uh, a tariff quota, we don't do it because uh, you know, we think it looks nice on paper or we want to boast about it in Parliament or something. We do it because we want to create opportunities for growth, for employment in the South African economy and also as a tool to broaden the participation in export performance to encompass many more people, particularly our own uh, disadvantaged people in this country. So uh, let me say we are more than anxious to hear uh, this is a fairly new uh, arrangement in place, more than anxious to hear uh, from anybody why you think that is the case, uh, because if there are uh, issues that we need to take up, we need to know about it. If there are information gaps, we need to be able to provide the information. If there are capacity issues, we want to support capacity development so that more of our people can take a, a, um, advantage uh, of these opportunities. So let me say I think this is an opportunity uh, for us to, to, you know, an opportunity for lots of things, but an opportunity for us also to hear from practitioners on the ground. How can we make more of the opportunities that we have from the EPA? That's what we want to hear about. I'm sure the Commissioner will say something very similar because that's what she said when we talked uh, just now on our own. Uh, and, um, you know, let's make this uh, something uh, that works better uh, for us in the interests of promoting higher levels of more inclusive growth in our country. Thank you very much.